Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and I'm making fall inspired soap right now, even though I'm in the midst of August heat here in Middle Tennessee. Uh, it's time to think a season ahead because soapers, you know, we have to consider cure time in there. So today I wanted, of course, it's fall. I want to do something with pumpkin. I don't have, if I wanted to go full on crunchy granola, I would make my own, grow my own pumpkins and you know, do all the natural pumpkin. Didn't do that. What I did was I bought this organic pumpkin. That's what I'm gonna use in my soap today. I bought the can. If you're crunchy enough to grow your own pumpkin this year and do it, more power to you. I think that's wonderful. Um, for the scent that I'm using, it's called Autumn Fig Harvest from Brambleberry. And it just smells uh, really good. It's not overtly pumpkin or anything, but I'm gonna put the pumpkin in there. It does discolor a little bit, so I thought we would just roll with that. The pumpkin's gonna discolor anyway, too. I'm gonna to be using raw organic goat milk from my farm in this uh, soap today, so it's gonna have sort of a foodie theme. And to that, you know, because pumpkin is orange and it has the natural beta carotenes and vitamins that are, that's really good topically, as well as when you eat it. Um, so I was thinking beta carotene, I'm gonna add some pumpkin powder, or not pumpkin, carrot powder that I have from Nurture Soap. Um, it's just really nice in the soap and it's good for you. So uh, I will add a little gentle exfoliation here with apricot seed powder. It's kind of orangey and I thought it would go with the whole foodie theme. So I'm gonna pull everything together and we are gonna make some foodie fall inspired pumpkin soap. Also, if you enjoy watching my videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe. That would be so wonderful. And also I'm on Instagram. If you want more up-to-date soaping pictures and what I'm up to in the soap studio, please consider checking that out. Thank you so much. So I've got all of my oils are melted and cooling off or cooled off pretty well. Uh, the cocoa butter takes the longest to cool off in here. And so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I have my pumpkin puree here and I have about an ounce per pound of oils is how I figured and I have water discounted um, my lye and goat milk solution uh, to accommodate for the moisture in the pumpkin. So I'm going to add my pumpkin to the oils now and get it really well incorporated in there. Wow, that was a splash. Um, and I'm also going to add my powdered ingredients in here and get it all blended up. And I'll probably go ahead and also add my fragrant oil in there, our autumn fig, my fall-inspired autumn fig harvest is what it's called. And it smells really nice. So I've got the pumpkin in there. What I've got here is my carrot powder um, and some apricot seed meal. So that is going to go in here. And I want this in everything. And then here I have my organic colloidal oats and my kaolin clay. And that is going to go in here. All my wonderful additives. And I'm just gonna get this really blended into the oil before we bring our goat milk lye solution over and get started. All right, we've got everything ready to go here. I've got all my additives and the fragrance oil already in my oils here. So that has the carrot powder the colloidal oats, the kale and clay, the apricot seed meal, it's all in here. There is my wonderful goat milk solution here that has Tussa silk fibers in it. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this in and I'm gonna be hand stirring. And I would like to split the batch in two and I've got a little bit of orange mica that I'm gonna put in just to kind of help that pumpkin color along. Uh, in part of it and then I'm going to do a little titanium dioxide in the other because this fragrance will discolor to I think it said a light or a tan or a light brown or something but it does have some discoloration and I'm just going to add a little TD in there to keep it bright. I'm going to make sure that the lye is well incorporated. Emulsion, that's what it is. We want to make sure we've reached emulsion. And that just means that the lye particles and molecules have bonded with the oil particles and molecules. You don't want any lye pockets or oil pockets in your soap. That would be super duper bad. All right, I think that's looking pretty emulsed. <laughs> I think it looks good. It's very well mixed. And this smells really good. Um, even though 
pumpkin is not in the title of this fragrance. It's definitely like a fall foodie bakery scent. So I think the pumpkin goes right along with it. And uh, pumpkin is very nutritious internally and externally. <laughs> so let's see, I poured that off. I think I'm gonna do a little more here. I want this a little more even. Okay. So I've got my titanium dioxide, which is a water soluble one. You can get oil soluble or water soluble. This one is water soluble um, in water. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and add that into my big pot here. Just to brighten it up. It's not gonna bring it down to white, but I'm hoping it'll get a nice, just a little brighter, maybe a creamy color would be great. my hand off here. I bought these gloves because they were a, a good price on Amazon and I'm not happy with them. They're kind of baggy and so I'm waiting to get through them and get back to some gloves that I like a little better the fit on them. All right I'm just gonna let that sit for a second and get my orange colors over here. I've got my electric orange from Nurture Soap and a little hammered copper that I'm going to put in there just to sort of rust it up and make it a little more pumpkin-y because this is electric orange but it's it's beautiful color just not quite what I'm going for today so to help it along in the pumpkin-y range I'm going to add this see that it's kind of a rusty red copper color and I think with those two together we're going to get a beautiful pumpkin-y color so I'm going to use my whisk to blend that in. Motion in there. This is a nice, it's already at a you know very light trace, but I don't want to push it. Let me get my spatula off to the side so I can really get in here and whisk. Now titanium dioxide, you really do want to disperse it and or both uh, stick blended because you can get, and I have done this, little white speckle pockets very easily. It's, um, you really wanna make sure it's blended well. And I can see the little apricot meal flecks in there. I think it's beautiful. It just sort of goes with the whole theme. All right. So I'm going to pull my whisks out because I've got a nice light trace and I'm going to pour these in the mold and then I'll probably run a hanger through it just to give it a little extra swirliness. Let me get you here in frame. So we'll do a little of the white on the bottom and come in with the orange. So relaxing. I need to hold that side because <laughs> I'll actually I'll pour from this side. I wonder if I even need to run a hanger through here. It's really liquidy. After I get this all poured in, I'm going to let it sit um, for a few minutes to firm up because I'd like to do some texturing on the top and it is too liquidy right now for that but time will cure that and uh, yeah I would just I want to use my little fork and do some little scoopies on the top and I have some blackberry seeds that I might sprinkle on the top just for a little a little something something I don't know I still go back and forth with putting the um, non soap items on top I think they're beautiful I've made soaps with botanicals on top. They're lovely. People love to look at them, but I don't know if it invites you to, you know, really invites you to bring it into the shower, you know, which is where I really want my soaps to be used. It's, it's a sweet compliment when people say, oh, it's too pretty to use. 
and that's sweet and I know they're trying to be nice but I really want you to use the soap <laughs> that's the point I really want you to use it so I go back and forth with having non soap items on the top if you have any feelings about that let me know going to let this sit for a few minutes and we'll come back with my fork and do the texturing. It's the next day and we're back with our autumn fig harvest and I put pumpkin in here so I'm calling it pumpkin and fig. Uh, the colors came out really pretty. It's looking great. So let's get this out of the mold and get in there and see how those swirls came out. <laughs> 